So in this final video of this uh, machining the solid model, I'm just going to do the finish passes. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually create a new toolpath group. So right click on here, groups and new toolpath group. Now I'm going to copy this contour basically by right clicking and dragging it and copy after. And essentially I'm going to edit the parameters of this and put in the cut parameters so that the compensation's in the control. This therefore allows me to modify the size of the component on the machine. Um, so in G codes, it will output either a G41 or G42 in the code. So the stock to leave on the sidewalls is going to be zero. And if I go to my tool, here I'm going to increase my cutting speed for finishing to 350 and my feed per tooth is going to go down to 0 0.07 and change the comment to finish out of contour and regenerate. Okay the first thing to notice on here then is if I look down on the top and again if I was to regenerate that operation um, the cutter comes down on center of the blue line and as it goes along this lead in it will apply its cutter compensation so again the length of the lead in has to be greater than the radius value of the cutter otherwise we will have problems applying compensation on the machine so again if I go isometric you can see at this point I'm doing this in two passes so the first pass is actually more or less in fresh air so I'm going to go to the parameters and in depth cuts I'm essentially going to turn off the depth cuts so just do this in one pass and again regenerate so now I'm just going to do a verification so I'm going to select all operations and do a verify and again I'm going to check my stop conditions so I'm checking for a I'm going to stop on a collision and my collision checking is set for holder shank shoulder and cutting length play So you can see that I've stopped due to a collision and the issue here is that the cutting length of the tool is actually not long enough. So I can either change the tool, but what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to finish this top area here first of all and then do a finish pass around the outside. So how do I select to just do a finish pass on this area here? Okay, so I'm going to copy this contour operation, this finish pass, right click and copy after. Now obviously I want to change this first pass. So expand and into geometry and I'm right clicking and rechain all. And here again, I want to make sure that I'm just selecting an edge as opposed to a loop. Rotate the model around and I'm going to cut along this edge. So it's going to start here and finish there. Green tick. Okay, I'm going to go to the parameters here because I actually don't want to go down the full depth of the edge. So um, I could change this to absolute and I'm actually going to go down to this depth on here. At the top of the stock, I could actually say is also this level on here. And the feed plane is going to be incrementally one and the retract plane is set to six and regenerate so i'm going to have the first finish pass just coming in and going down to the depth of this slot and um, just to try and avoid getting a witness further down um, and then the second finish pass going down the full depth and going all the way around the block okay i just noticed that uh on this finish pass here you can see that I'm wrapping down to one millimeter and then feeding for one millimeter before uh, going along but on the second finish pass I've got quite a long feed down on here so again I'm just going to go into the parameters 
the linking parameters and again I'm saying that the top of the stock is actually now at the bottom of this surface and that the feed plane again is going to be incrementally one millimeters above the top of the stock and regenerate. So now you can see here that I'm just rapiding down. So it's just making my toolpath a little bit more efficient. Okay, so that's the outside of the block done. So now what I want to look at is maybe doing a finish pass inside in this U shape in here. I'm just going to move my little insert arrow down. Okay, we'll collapse that, grab this guy and right click and copy after. Again, I'm going to go to the geometry and I want to rechain. And this time I need to select what we call a partial loop. So not a face or not just an edge. I want what we call a, a partial loop. And I'm going to start cutting on this line here. The first point you pick, Mastercam will detect the closest end point. That is the correct face. And that is going to be the start point. And then you can see it says select an edge for the end point of the loop. So I want to end on here. I'm going to go to my parameters again, and you can see my depth is set to zero incremental, so it'll automatically be at this depth. The top of the stock, I'm going to select a point on here, and the feed plane is going to be one, and my retract plane again is absolute six. And regenerate. Now I don't actually like the lead in and lead out option on this one, um, so I need to modify it. I want to pull this lead in and lead out a little bit further out. So back to the parameters, and if I look at my lead in and lead out, at the moment the length of the line is 100% of the diameter of the cutter, so it's 12 millimeters long, and likewise the arc is 100%. Now I can leave that for the moment. So I'm going to modify the sweep angle. The sweep angle is currently set to 90 degrees, so I'm going to put that sweep angle to 40 degrees, and this button here will copy the conditions that I have in the entry over to the exit, and again green tick and regenerate. So again, if I was to look down at the top here, you can see that's a much nicer lead in and lead out. It's kind of like a teardrop shape. Again, if I was to regenerate that operation and back plot it, again, you can see that the cutter is a nice distance away. As it goes along the initial line, applies the lead in, then the arc, round and back out again. It is possible to add more geometries. So I could add this region and this region as a partial loop, and in fact going all the way around the outside of the component. But the issue there is that I will have to use the same lead in and lead out for all operations that I include. So maybe just to demonstrate that, on geometry, I could add a chain. And again, I want to make sure that I've just got a partial loop, selecting this edge. That's the correct face. Where do I want the end point of the loop to be? Making sure you get the right end point. So just clicking on this end point here, so that's where it's going to end. If you select them the wrong way around, obviously it is possible to reverse them and regenerate. Okay, so I've just noticed here that my toolpath appears to be going down a little bit too deep. Um, so this finish pass is actually going down deeper than it should be. So again, if I went into the parameters on here, um, if I look at breakthrough, I've actually had a breakthrough um, of 0 0.08. So that would be vital to ensure that I change that. Um, another thing that's probably worth looking at is, again, if I go to isometric on here and if I was to regenerate this, um, what I can do in this situation is, um, if I go to the linking parameters, I'm going to actually say that the top of the stock is just incrementally one mil. So what that will do is it will ensure that the top of the stock is always one millimeters above the final depth, which means that if I have a feed plane one millimeter above the top of the stock, that it'll wrap it down to 
two millimeters above the final depth. Now, maybe if I was to regenerate this, you'll see that on this toolpath. So here, it's going to wrap it down to here and then feed down for two millimeters. And likewise, then if I look over here, again, it's going to wrap it down to a feed plane, which is one millimeter above the top of the stock, which is one millimeter above the actual final depth. Okay, so my preference, because I may want to change the lead in and lead out for the various areas, is to copy this operation down. So copy after into the geometry and essentially rechain all. Again, picking a partial loop, start cutting at the end point of this correct face end on here regenerate the lead in in this case then I want to change and again I might go for a 90 degree and regenerate so I would be happier with that lead in And likewise then copy this operation and again might do a complete pass all the way around. Okay, so finally I've just added the last remaining um, finish passes. One point to note, I always like to have my finish passes at the very end of the program. So I can start the program here um, if I want to resize the block. And another advantage of having multiple operations for finish pass means that I can it's very easy to identify with inside the NC code for example this is finished the S contour so if I want to for some reason just to run that contour I can as opposed to going and running uh, all of the finish passes would say around the outside of the part so finally then select all operations and verify and make sure that my stop condition is set to collision and my collision checking, I'm checking between the holder, the shank, the shoulder, and the cutting length, and play. So these are my roughing operations. leaving material on all the side walls, drilling and tapping the holes, and then applying my finish passes. And we can see that we have no collision.